Oh, hey, I'm Coco, and welcome to our talk show, Single and Too Tired to Mingle. We'll be talking about relationships with ourselves, our exes, our kids, and other important beings. So stay tuned. All right. Hi, Veronica. How are you? I'm very well. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's so nice to have you. It's going to be such a good chat. Yes, and thank you for taking the courage to have me. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm up for the challenge. Brilliant. <laughs> All right. This is going to be a long introduction to you because you've done so many things in life. So for 20 years, you have been working in the field of personal development, emotional intelligence, and horse-human experience and interaction, which we'll talk about later what that is. You help people find themselves who are stuck in various ways and um, kind of be it domestic violence, weight issues, other issues that people might have. You're also an author. You have traveled the world, ran the New York Marathon, climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. <laughs> just a few things. <laughs> to just name a few because we don't have that much time. <laughs> Would you like to add anything to your achievements at this point? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. Oh, I think it's just, you know, I don't know if that makes me sound really, really old <laughs> because I've done so much. Well, we're going to go back now. So this is where you are today. So we're pinpointing Absolutely. you to today. But you have quite a colourful past, which we're going to be talking Absolutely. about. Um, and how, kind of how that got you to where you are today. So you were an alcoholic for around 20 years. You were a heavy smoker, sex addict. Your relationships were quite violent that you were in. You even tried to kill yourself a few times. We're quite happy that you didn't manage to do that and we can have you here I don't today. Know if I managed to kill myself. It was like I was very suicidal most of the Right. Time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Glad you're here. <laughs> <laughs> you have been married twice. Your first marriage uh, resulted in a daughter. Yeah. Um your second and which you walked out of when your daughter when you were 8 months pregnant. Yes. So that's quite dramatic. And your second marriage lasted only eight weeks. <laughs> so that must be a record of some kind. <laughs> but today you have been sober for 25 plus years. Yeah. Um, you no longer smoke. Do you still smoke? No. Nope. You don't no, smoke. Amazing. Smoke. And you've just had amazing transformative experiences with yourself and now with other people. Um, and so we're going to talk about all of this stuff today. It's so exciting. Um, but what we're going to start with is about your childhood experience. Um, about your family life, uh, about your school experience, and kind of how you went through your childhood slash youth years. Well, that was very colourful. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I came from a lovely family, one of three. I was the middle one, so and I always felt like the middle one. I so felt three daughters? Three, three daughters. Okay. Felt I never fit, fitted in. Um, I think most of the things happened when I moved to school. So I moved from one school that I was really happy at, right. that I really enjoyed. But my two sisters were at a different school. Oh. They were in a different school. Basically, you know, I couldn't have passed the test to get in. Okay, so there was a test to get into the other school, so that's why they sent you to a different school? I was, yeah, I was right. at the different school. Okay. Never passed the test to get in. And so I went to a different school and I loved it and it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. However, I then got into that school and I think that's where, you know, the new girl on the block. Yeah. Um, you know, I would be around about seven. Um, so that was that was where I would say that I recognised, I don't know if that was a wake up call for me, but that's where I would say that I recognised that I had issues. And what kind of issues did you recognise? <laughs> <laughs> well, the list is so Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Do you know why? Because I think that a lot of people have very similar issues to yeah. other people. Absolutely. No one is just an island with their own issues. No. So I think that when we're talking about our own issues that we've had, and especially it's so nice that you've transformed that into your Absolutely. life and you're helping others, I think it's so important for people to hear that others have, have, have had issues and have overcome them. Yeah. So I think the biggest thing you. was is that and this is only in hindsight because at the right. time I didn't really know what was happening. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. This is me looking back with a head that's like, you know, yeah. a completely different head from back then. Um, I definitely didn't get, you know, I didn't um, learn the same way other kids learned. Right. So when the teacher put something up on the board or she was asking you to read and just, it was just a general 
I had a real difficulty understanding what it was that I was to do. I never so ever. How did that make you feel? That. I think that's such a common. Maybe nowadays not so much because they diagnose things like quite dyslexia, quickly. ADHD. You know, there's so many things. Yeah. Um, I would say that I had very much emotional blocks. That's right. what I would say. I had definitely blocks, and I had a real challenge listening to the teacher. Or I think we all have that. Challenge. I was bored witless, really, yeah, to be quite yeah, honest. Yeah. I was like, I'm the one to do this. I want to be playing football. I think you're not the only not, one with that yeah, challenge. That's right. <laughs> and so I think that's really where my issues from cutting off from the education system, right. I would say that that's really... So you left school at what age? I left school at 15. Um, I don't know if I left or if I was told to leave. Right. You know, it was yeah. that way. It okay. was like I'd had enough. I never really stuck in at secondary school I was just one of them that just sat yeah. at the back of the class had a big carry on in hindsight it was because I didn't I, I couldn't understand the way that they were teaching so did they diagnose you later on as to what you had no was it dyslexia or was it something else yeah I would just say that I, I just I would say it was definitely dyslexic yeah. there's no doubt about it um but I came to all of these conclusions just through understanding me yeah I always had them I just, I was just very, very challenging. And I covered it up really well as well. Right. Because it was one of them that there's nothing wrong with me. Yeah. Because if there's something wrong, what is it? Yeah. And I never really wanted to see that part. I never knew that I didn't want to see it. I just thought there was nothing wrong with me. I was so good at hiding. I don't know if it's hiding, because that just makes me think of my son. Yep. Two years ago, we realised this child cannot even see, like, very far. Really? And I'm like... How did you not know this? And he thought, oh, I thought everyone saw like that. He guessed, yeah, listen to this, that's, he's 19 and a half today. He was 17 when we figured this out. And I said to him, well, how are you reading the board? And he goes, I just guessed by how long the words were. I'm like, yeah. like he's, he, luckily he's good in school, like by some miracle, but he was just guessing what he was seeing around him. I'm like, how is this even possible? And that is right. And I used to guess what was on the bit paper. Yeah. When I missed yeah. stuff out, it was like, go back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, what have I done? What have I done? So the terror, you know, made me go back, have a look. Yeah. But I had that problem, particularly with Eden. Right. Okay. So you still, you were saying to me previously, you still wanted, as a child, I think all children just want to be good and want to be, want to please. So yeah. what happened when you kind of, couldn't do that. So, and you I got stopped. Destructive, yeah. You got destructive, right? So, how how did that manifest? So, you left the school at fifteen. Yeah. And you became destructive. Yeah, I so. think I was a bit destructive before then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but now you have all the time in the world. <laughs> As my mother used to say, she's a rebel without a cause. Right. Uh, okay. You know. But uh, yeah, I think when I left school, so the type of thing where my head was back then is, is that I went for an interview for a job, mm -hmm. you know, I was 15, he was asking me all these things, can you do this, can you type, can you do shorthand, and I'm like, yeah, 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 couldn't do any of them, <laughs> but I'm sitting there saying that I could do everything, right. and then I get the job. And then I can't type and I can't do shorthand. Do you know what I mean? It's like, what did I think was going to happen? And that is the way that I kind of... I like of, it. It's always <laughs> a complete denial of what I was like, you know? Or just overconfident. And I remember the oh, arrogance, I would say. Yeah, you know, well, yeah. Definitely. Um, you know, and I remember he brought me in one day and he says, if you just take this in shorthand, and, you know, he read out all these things, and I was, like, pretending it was, you know, writing it down. I thought, I'll get the gist of it, and then I'll type it up. Hmm. That was what I thought. Right. And then phone went, you know, he went away, came back, and he says, oh, can you read that back to me? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I never had anything on the bit of paper. <laughs> oh, my God. And I was like, and he says, you know, he says, I've known all along. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he says, but this is good. He says, you've got other qualities. <laughs> and, you know, from that day, I started to be much more honest. And I was like, yeah, okay. and he taught me all different you know, things in different ways. But that, that that was where my head was, you know. It was like... And that's the type of things that kind of followed me all my life, you know. I was always doing crazy things like that. Okay. I mean, it never really served me well, but I got through it. And how I still got to where I got to, you mm -hmm. know, I'll never know. But in that job, um, you know, 16, I went up to the pub. Mm -hmm. um, they were all drinking... And that was where it was like, 
I took that drink and on top of already having so many emotional blocks, I just went straight into a blackout. So talk us, what do you mean by an emotional block? Well, I was very, very emotional. The second children usually are. Right. So anything that happened, you know, I had everything inside me, like the jealousy, the insecurities, right. the arrogance. I mean, you name it, you know, I was full of it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have known that at the time. Mm -hmm. I know it now because of the recovery that I've been in. Mm -hmm. um, and I think just putting a, a drink on top of that, I mean, it's like putting a lighter at a fire, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so talk us through the journey. So how to, Okay, so 16-year-old, you were going to these pubs. I was going to the you pubs. You started drinking. I'm guessing everyone drinking. there was much older than you. Yeah. I think there's a lot of 16-year-olds that hang out in bars all the time. That's right. And I mean, you okay. know, I wasn't even legally drinking at that right. age. Okay. Snake bites, you know, cider and lager and... And one of the things is, is that I couldn't remember half of what I was doing. Right. So what I didn't know, because I thought that was like normal, mm -hmm. is that I didn't know that these were blackouts. I didn't know that. Interesting. So you, what, you just didn't and remember was, chunks so, of your day? or No. So I'd be sitting talking to you like this, but I'd be in a blackout. Wow. And I would be sitting, you know, I would be away to a party. Had no idea that I was at the party. Interesting. I haven't heard of and, it before. Yeah. Oh. So I was in, I, I used to take really, really horrendous blackouts and I didn't really know what I was doing. And that really fueled something else because can you imagine where that eventually took me? So it didn't matter where I went, mm. I knew that about the fourth or fifth drink, I was no going to remember what I was doing. Right. And in some circumstances, it was terrific because I didn't know what I was doing, who I was with, where I was. <laughs> oh, my God. And I lived right up until I was 36 years old doing these sorts of things in the blackouts. And it's really quite sad. I mean, I have an absolute hoot with it now. You know, I would park my car somewhere. I had no idea where it was. And then I didn't know how to go and find it. <laughs> because I didn't know where it was. <laughs> so how did you find it? <laughs> Luckily, somebody else would say, oh, yeah, yeah, you left it there, you oh know. My gosh. I would phone everybody around, see my car, you know, and they were like, well, you, dropped us, you dropped us off. Oh, no. So, so even driving while you were having these yeah. blackouts. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, for all of that time. And eventually, you know... Um, it, it just, it wore me down. It, it it brought me to my end. I mean, I was 26 when I had my daughter. Right. And so how did you manage to raise a child, presumably on your own, given that you've just left really your husband? It was really a challenge. Husband. Mm -hmm. You're doing all this drinking. Are you uh -huh. working at the time? Yep. Okay. Yep. So talk us through that. That sounds like... Um... <laughs> I think they call it a functioning alcoholic. Right. But I don't know if they know, the, knew the extent of the blackouts. Right. But the blackouts were severe, very, very severe. And as I say, people could not believe that they had been sitting, chatting away to me, you know, I was up dancing, I was away here, you know, I was away there, and I had no recollection of it. And so you can imagine when I've got a young baby, um, I stayed with my parents because I was homeless for a while. Right. Um, and that was all the carry on, you know, with my husband, because you can imagine... It was just fueled with drink and violence and me not remembering and I'm supposed to have done this. and I mean, it was just horrendous. Um, but, you know, at the age of... Um, so I had my daughter. Yeah. It made it even worse because now I've got postnatal post, you know, depression, right. which was okay. horrendous. And I didn't really know how to stop drinking because I didn't really know that it was associated with drink. I knew there was What about your parents? So you're living at your parents. Did they not put yeah. two together? Yeah, or? but they never knew about the blackouts. Right, okay. Okay. So they would be sitting talking to me. I mean, I was talking a whole load of crap, you know. <laughs> and it was just the drink. But no idea on the blackouts. But the blackouts were severe. And um, I eventually went up on my own. And this is where it really kicked off. Because I would take a drink. And then I had a youngster. And God only knows how the two of us are still alive. And that's the truth. Um, at 36, I was found, um, 
my records had got stuck and I was found I had overdosed on the alcohol and drugs. Right. And the police knocked the door down and it was the best thing that ever happened to me. It wasn't at the time yeah. because obviously it was, you know, pretty... So you had this, um, you fell unconscious at home? Uh-huh. Oh, right. On my own. Police were in the house. They were wanting to know who was at the party. It was just oh, me. Right, okay. So I had everything, you know, all the records everywhere, all the CDs, all the cigarettes, all the <laughs> all the bottles, all the oh. drugs, and it was just me. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> And then you heard the police say something which kind of was a bit sobering to you as well. It was. They said... Uh, so you were 36? So I was 36 year old. They had got me out, you know, the stumor that I was in. I wouldn't go in... Yeah, I wouldn't go with them. Mm-hmm. I, would, I, I refused to go with them. Right. I don't know what all of that was about. It was in a blackout. But anyway, I refused to go with them. And then they went on to their walkie-talkie and they says, we're, we're here with this woman. She's in her 50s. And I thought, well, that's no me. <laughs> <laughs> and, I was, and then it was like she's refusing to, you know, yeah. uh, come with us. She's definitely an alcoholic, and I thought, well, it's definitely no me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> there's drink everywhere. There's, you know, uh, she doesn't know where her daughter is. <laughs> You're like, oh, wow, you know. But my daughter was at her friend's house. Right, it was okay. just that in that stumor. It's right. like, well, where is she? Because they had gone through. Were you thinking, what kind of a mother is this? <laughs> No, never even crossed my mind. It's <laughs> so like, what are the police doing here? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's how far away I was. Wow. And the week before, I had gone to see somebody because I was really frightened of myself. I was frightened of where I was waking up. Right. I was frightened of what situations I was in. I mean, I, honestly, we could, you know, we could write a series on the amount of things that happened to me. We should, maybe. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it was it was horrendous, and I did go, and they were like, w- "I'll get you help." Right. It was it was a guy that I knew, and he says, "I'll get you help." He okay. says, "You've definitely got a problem." I says, "Well, I've got a problem, but what is it?" You know, and he, mm. he was like, "I'll get you help." That happened. The police were there. I phoned them back up. I says, "It's too late for the help." I says, "The police are here." You know, I says, um, "Everything's happening to me," and he was like, "It's okay." And it was him that then sent me out to this place, and it was uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. All right. And so he got somebody to to help me, and I've never I've never really looked back from then. Wow. So my colourful past mm-hmm. was like, it was really you know for me, I mean I like a joke and I like a laugh, mm-hmm. and I had a really great laugh about all the things that I've done. However, at the time, it was very very painful. I mean I was suicidal. Mm-hmm. I wanted to take that pain away. I did not want to be like that. I was gonna, what was that pain that you were feeling? Do you know? Not addressing anything. The pain was like, what am I doing? I've got this gorgeous wee girl. Mm. You know, I'm so unhappy. Mm. I didn't want to be here. I knew I was all that she had. Does that make sense? Because her father wasn't there. And it was like, I was in a a prison within myself. Really in a prison. And I felt so trapped. I couldn't speak about it. I mean, I can speak about anything today because of the help that I've had and because of what I've done in my life, you know. But I would never have been able to articulate what was wrong with me. Never in a million years. I could never have said, you know, even when I went in to, you know, um, getting therapy and, you know, different things, um, I could never articulate. I could never put my finger on what it was. I really had no idea. It was just, I think my whole life I lived that it was everybody else's fault except mine mm-hmm. because nobody showed me how to look at me. Mm-hmm. That was the biggest problem. I mean, people would say, I, you know, that's right, they are like that or they're like this. They never said, Veronica, what was your part in it? Yeah. Until... I went into Alcoholics Anonymous and somebody says to me, all right, so all these people are all wrong. What about you? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like... So walk us through the Alcoholic um, alcoholic Anonymous. What happened there? I'm so interested. Like, it's so interesting. Yes. I mean, it's, it's a fascinating place. You know, I went in. I got sent to a place which was really phenomenal. So um, there was all of these women and they were like something out of Dynasty. And they were oh, all really? dressed up well, and they were all beautiful. Did, did you think you were an alcoholic once you got mm, sent there? No. Not yet? No, no, okay. yet. No, yet. No, no, I'm just going along to this place. Right. And this woman had the tea trolley and she gave me a, a would you like a tea? 
uh, or a coffee. And I'm thinking, she's a bit overdressed for a <laughs> trolley woman, you know. Right. And um, she sat down beside me and she started chatting to me. And here she was an alcoholic. And I was like, all right. You know, <laughs> ma. <laughs> 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 and then, you know, somebody was doing a top table. And it was like, and I thought, oh, this guy's told them everything about me. What's a top table? A top table is somebody sitting sharing their story. Right. And that story was very similar to mine, blackouts, bringing a, a, a child up on their own. And I was sitting thinking, I mean, genuinely, I was, I was sitting thinking, oh, my God, he's told them everything and she's just sitting repeating because it was so, it was so like yeah. what I had been through. Right. But um, it wasn't actually you. It was someone else. It wasn't actually me. It was their own story, mm -hmm. but it was very, very similar. Yeah. And she looked like absolutely phenomenal. You know, she was like something like 25 years sober. And I remember thinking, 25 years sober, what am I going to do at Christmas? I mean, this was September. Mm. And I'm like, how how can I how can I not have a drink at parties? And my head was wasted, you know? Right. And I remember saying to the woman next to me, it, does this mean that you're not allowed to drink ever again? You know, and she was like, no, just for the, the day. And I was like, yeah. all right. Yeah. So it's only just for a day that we have to do it, you know? No concept, no idea. And that day has led to 26 years. Okay. And I was there, it was there that really there was um, a few real phenomenal people that I happened to get put in front of. Right. And they were brutal with their honesty. And I mean like honesty like you have never, I had never experienced anything like it. They were like, and what's your part? And what did you, and it was, right. I was Everything always external. Yeah. I was like out there. So I was always like, well, you know, he did this and she did that and they did that and my boss said this. It was never like, what did I do? Mm. And this amazing woman says, what was your part? And where, oh my God, it was like me. Mm. How can it possibly be me? I think it's a common common thing that we all do, I'm sure. And that was that was really, you know, it took me quite a while, you know, because obviously I, I, I projected all over them that they were some, like, space person from, you know, yeah. a different planet talking to me like that. Yeah. Um, but it was the best thing that ever happened to me. And after about three and a half years, they, you know, really go, going back, understanding it, I would say that I had a real challenge because there was nobody could articulate the things that, like if I asked a question, a really deep question, like this is how I'm feeling, why am I feeling like mm -hmm. that? And they would say, well, where have you been? So I would tell them what I'd been, what I had been doing. And then they would say, yeah, just keep coming back here. And I had, I never, and I could not get, to another level does that make sense mm -hmm. I could not get to another level with inside me I had great people and they took me to the levels that they took to me and I'm you know I'm forever grateful for that but then I started um I, I knew that I needed something much more I just didn't know you never know what it is mm -hmm. that you need yeah but I do believe that when the pupil's ready the teacher appears and I do believe that and um, I had done so much, you know, within that three years. I did tend to change my addiction around. Right. So okay. I put the drink yeah. down and then I became a workaholic. And then I went to the gym and I transformed my body. And I just mm. moved it around. And it was like, next, what next? Mm. You know, this man, oh, fly all over the world. Oh, go out with that one. You know, it was just like, it was just the same busyness. Mm. But I was sober now. Right. And I'm not on anything. Yeah. And I'm not getting away. I'm not smoking. I'm not drinking. I'm not taking tablets because I took loads of tablets mm. as well when I first got sober because I just couldn't cope. Yeah. I, I, I had um, anxiety, panic attacks. Right. Horrendous, horrendous fear. I'd be walking along the road, take a panic attack. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I was in some nicky. Eh? But that was the way... That, that I was and I hid it I didn't want to tell people because I didn't even know mm. why I was panicking do you know now? yes yes I know a hundred I know everything that right. um, 
had happened to me. And it's only in that hindsight and looking back. Mm. And it was really phenomenal being able to sit down and actually really address it and really understand what Veronica was about. And everything that I did, I wore a mask. Mm. Every I had every mask under the sun, the pretender. Do you know what I mean? The bullshit. I mean, I've got a program. It's it's the mask yeah, program. Tell us about, is it okay? Tell us. About and it's that a like amazing, bit. you know. And it's like so. We've got the great pretender. Do you know what I mean? We've mm. got the people pleaser. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. You know, I I think the alcoholics, the biggest people pleaser, and then they're full of resentment. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest thing, you know. So I would be like, yeah, yeah, and then. I didn't want to do that, mm. but I didn't know how to say no mm. because I needed somebody to like me because I hated my guts. Right. I really hated what I was doing, but I had no idea how to get out of that. And it was only, you know, I went really all over the world, to be honest, and I went out into all different places and I picked up all different bits and pieces and I was still struggling. I was really still tr struggling. And I remember... Um, my daughter was getting older now, you know, and she's like a beautiful young woman and she was super intelligent and she was like, you know, why why, why don't you get yourself your own programme? Mm -hmm. She says, because how have you got to here and how have you done what you've done? Yeah. And she says, you've done phenomenal things, you know, like I had won like masses of awards, I had done fantastic at work. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's like I've done all of these incredible yeah. things and she was like, why don't you write down how you've done it? Mm. And I was like, oh. So what she actually did was she sat with me right. and took everything out of my head. Wow. And she sat with me for months, months on end. Every week, you know, every other day, yeah. we sat down whenever she could. And she wrote screes and she took everything out that was inside wow. my head and together we put it into a program and I started mm -hmm. to use that program and I've never ever looked back wow. and I've gone from there to do incredible incredible things I can create anything that I want if you think it all of the mayhem that I caused yeah all of the chaos it was like a circus. It was a really clever act. Because you seem very calm, like your energy is very calm and centred. I know, I'm so centred mm. today because I've done so much work on myself. I didn't just arrive like this. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've been all over the world. I've done. Tell us about being all over the things. world and your experiences that kind of put the pieces of the puzzle together. Well, first of all, when you're in um, here, they're kind of just looking at your yeah. head. They're kind of just like listening to yourself resound back. And I had done that to death. I had spoke mm -hmm. to death and it was like, oh, what am I going to do now? And in actual fact, I spoke that much about it. I think it was actually making me go back, back the way rather than forward. Right. Okay. And um, I remember looking for something and there wasn't the internet, there wasn't any of these yeah. sort, sorts of things. It was very few and far between. But anyway, I found this um, Chinese master that was out in... Thailand okay. and he was saying all these things about how you know yoga and meditation I had never heard of any of these things right and I'm thinking to myself oh, that'd be great you know so <laughs> I remortgaged my house kind of like the typing story again <laughs> <laughs> exact same as the typing that'd be great phones up right. remortgaged my house it was oh, 15,000 wow. and I'm going back like 20 odd years ago right so I read more I thought I'll get it I'll just do it. I just did these things, you know. Right. No no thought in my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So get the mortgage and I phoned up and it was, you know, the gatekeeper. Oh, now, have you done meditation? Yes. <laughs> have you done? Yes, I've done all of that. Everything that she said. Yes, yes. Done all of it. She you know, said something like bricklaying in between. <laughs> <laughs> so you're advanced. Yes, I'm an advanced oh student. God. Of course I'm an advanced student. And that was oh it. Oh, my God. So... I was actually going out with this other uh, girl. She was um, the CEO of a company. Right. And um, I says to her, we're on it. And she was like, it can't be that easy. I said, oh, I just told them that we've done it. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, well, I'm glad it was you and no me. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So she I, went with you? Yeah. Whoever you went? Okay. There we go. You know, the first day, it was a big glass window. And of course, I walked right into the glass window. i never seen, you know. Oh <laughs> and that... 
really helped me because it was tai chi qigong mm -hmm. um it was like yoga it was like all of these things now there is no way that i could meditate you can imagine my head it was yeah, 100 yeah, miles yeah, an hour yeah, yeah. so meditation was out the box you know um but slowly but surely i couldn't really take very much a, of it and and he was a master and I went up to him you know and I says to him look you know I haven't done any of this <laughs> okay so you and fessed he, up he didn't like catch you out yeah I mean he, he, he did he says well we knew that yeah he okay says, but what I do admire is the courage and your yeah. determination yeah. to be on something like this mm. and the the you know it was like I knew that that was the right course right I knew that interesting oh. but what I didn't have was the qualification for it yeah but it's like well did I need it yeah. So I, I look at it Clearly that not. way. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. and it's the same. It's like the same in business, you know. Um, when I'm going into big companies, it's like you've got to do screeds and you've got to have this, and I'm like, nah, I'm not doing that, you know, because I'm just not doing it. And the next minute I'm in, mm. you know. And it's like that's because I know how to create it and I do know what I'm doing mm -hmm. to do with well-being and anything that's to do with the human, mm -hmm. I know it inside out because it's my expertise wow. and I've never done anything like a psychology course mm -hmm. or anything like that. I'm being, bent, being, being a plenty psychologist, mm -hmm. but you can walk all over them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. And they're be quite predictable. Be because they're, 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 in, they're doing it from a book. Yeah. Everything, everything that I have done, I have done it from my experience. And I don't have this right or wrong. I have, it's a lesson. Hmm. Because what I found is, is that particularly when I'm working with people, mm -hmm. is what's right for them is right for them. Yeah, It might not be right for me. Yeah. And all I've got to do is accept them. Okay. for the way that they are because I feel that I had a real challenge being accepted my whole life and everywhere I go I feel that that's the biggest thing is people don't ex accept you they want you to be or do what they want you to be or do Interesting. and you know how there's all this kind be kind to people mm -hmm. I mean have you ever eh? I mean I'm like really it's like, so you're nice to their face and then yeah, you're like, oh my God. It. Whereas is, is, I just accept people. And that's a challenge. That is a challenge. Because when you get the idiot that drives out in front of you, you know, or you yeah. get somebody that does something crazy, yeah, it's very, very difficult to accept them. But that's what I'm working on. Wow. And regardless of what it is, mm -hmm. I accept them. Maybe after, you know, yeah. I vomited <laughs> <laughs> a ton of stuff out. But, you know. Yeah. And once that acceptance comes in, it's like, that's it. I, I, I don't want anybody to do anything that yeah. they don't want to do. But when people are powerful, actually. really, really pained, yeah. then they need to, it's not working for them. They're working against themselves. Yeah. My whole life I worked against Veronica. I worked for everybody else, yeah. but I worked against myself. And today I work for myself. And if somebody's got a problem with that, that's their problem. Yeah, that's it. And that is like an absolute miracle. And my relationships are so much healthier right. than I've ever had in my entire life. Okay. But I am a challenge because of the level of honesty. Right. And, and being that level, you know, having that level of honesty can be, you know, because people are like, oh, you know, if she just said that, why you know I'm not drinking? Because yeah. I would empty the place out. <laughs> <laughs> and then black out and do fun stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, talk us about the horse-human interaction that you work on. Yeah. How, how does that? So I love horses. Right. I've loved them since I was a kid. Okay. Um, but I was probably frightened of them because they're, you know, they're big, yeah, huge. Yeah, big beasts. Yeah. Yeah. And I moved down to the borders and when I was down in the borders, I used to go this walk and the, in this walk, there was always horses in the field. Right. So, of course, I've never been near any horses because I've just been in the pub, you know. <laughs> Maybe it's like... So I've never really been anywhere in I didn't. I mean, when people used to say, I'm going for a walk, I used yeah. to think they're mad. Who's the mad one, eh? Yeah. <laughs> so 
Um, yeah, so it was in the countryside and these horses were there and they came over one day. They came to you? You came to me. Right. I was standing and I thought, they're miles away because they were so far away. Are these wild horses? Just wild okay, horses, yeah. yeah and, and, and I thought, I wonder if I could get them to come over, mm -hmm. but but by not walking towards them. And I never done it the first time. So where was this? This was down in the borders and uh, just outside Bigger. Okay. And so that's what I done. And every day I went to the horses and one day they all came over and I was like, oh my God, the experience was absolutely mm -hmm. incredible. And they were all around me. And initially I was probably very frightened, yeah. but I knew I had a good handle on how to deal with fear. Right. And how to breathe properly by this time. Mm -hmm. And so I started to do that. And I mean, I'm talking like, you know, 17 hands, big horses all around me. Wow. And I'm in the middle of them. So they just came and stood just, around yeah. you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. And I was like, wow. And I knew there was something then. Right. And of course, what did I do? I went and bought a horse. <laughs> <laughs> for, my do <laughs> for my daughter, for my daughter, because she would like this. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay. went, and the daughter was like, "I don't even want. I just want a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Not really want a horse." And we got this horse, and that was when I started to work with the horse. So I was over every day, and what I did was I didn't ride it or do anything like that. Mm -hmm. What I was doing was, is I was giving it a message and seeing if it actually. No way. If it could actually tell me more and do what I was asking, no way. And so that was how I started to to work with this horse. Wow. So when when I went to the field yeah. for for the horse, it would be miles away. So before I went, I would sit in the house and I would ask it to be at the gates for me when I when I went over. No way. And when I went over. There's a horse waiting. No way. Now, I did that in a lot of places, a lot of liveries, because obviously, wow. you know, and they used to say, it's as if they knew you were coming. <laughs> and it was like, they didn't know I was coming. But I think they think you're mad. Yeah, for I sure. think, you, you know, you're mad occurrence. because yeah. it's not an everyday occurrence. Yeah. And that was when I started to think, oh, my goodness, this is phenomenal. And so I started to write programs around so Would you that. say that you're very in touch with yourself? And yes. Kind of it, to Nate? To kind of like the universe, yes. let's say. Yeah. So if a fly's in my way or something, rather than before, I would just grab it and kill it. <laughs> Batter it against, <laughs> hit it against the wall with a bit of paper. All right. I just ask it to leave. Oh, my God. Does. I need to and try that. It's, it's absolutely incredible. And it's mm. the same like with birds or dogs or anything that I, I come in touch with. Um, I have got this way that, you know, it's like animal communication, mm. really. Did that start when you were in Thailand with your yoga and uh, meditation, or did you think? Yeah, you I had would. That I, I got a bit of an understanding it there. I got a bit of an understanding because that was when he was like, "You can create anything," and I'm thinking, right? How can you create anything? So right. they didn't actually give me a program that took me there, mm -hmm. but it was just wee snippets that I picked up, right? And then. I developed this phenomenal programs that I have to, uh, and I can articulate it. Okay. So tell us more about your programs. I'm very interested. So I have, I've done various ones. One was called the mirror. I did the masks and I've got the projection model and they're three really life changing, right. phenomenal transformational programs. And basically I'm taking you inside you. Right. That's quite scary for a lot of people, I would imagine. Or for everyone, it takes probably. so much courage to sit in front of me. So when somebody comes in front of me, mm. especially because they found out about me, <laughs> <laughs> because it, it, I'm, I don't advertise or market right. myself, so people get to me by word of mouth. Okay. Um, and I'm starting when starting to feel scared. Now. <laughs> <laughs> and then I sit down, and then you know we've got a vision of ourselves for for sure. You know, and what I do is, is I, I don't give you anything. I remove right. all the bullshit. Okay. I remove all the bullshit because it's just all made up. And yeah. the reason that we make everything up is, is because we don't know who we are. Right. 
So we make up who we are. Oh, yeah, I'm Veronica, you know, I'm six, blah, 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 and all of these sorts of things, and I'm a business consultant, and that's not who I am. These are things that, that's my age, that's what I do, that's my name. It's not who I am. How do, I, how do you articulate who you are? I don't think you can. I think it, it's something that's inside that you have to come to, and it is a feeling, and... Um, the nearest thing that you can get to that. So I was everybody else. I was what my mum wanted to be, my dad wanted to be, my teacher wanted me Are to be. Are you like a people pleaser by nature? A hundred percent. Isn't everybody? Mm, I don't think so. You know, it's like, I would say that there's elements of it. I'm sure, yeah. And everybody, I was yeah. probably extreme. I don't think I'm much of a people pleaser, but likewise, I'm not going to say no to everything either. But uh, yeah. Or am I more than I think? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I know, that's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, man. I know, I know. But it is, and that is right. Because yeah. why are you saying, you know, if, if it's no for me today, it's no. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Mm. And people, you know, I know for a fact, they're like, oh, well, she's this or she's that. They call me for everything. Yeah. But it's like, well, you have a look at your own self. Because all I'm saying is, is I'm not doing that because I don't want to. It's not right for me. Yeah. That's it. And people are like up in arms with it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that I mean, you know, I think that's the the the, the biggest thing is is uh, the people pleasing, and I think that's with everybody. I think there's a few main things, but the biggest thing is is because we don't know who we are. And as I say, I remove blocks, so I remove all the obstacles that are keeping you from really knowing who you are. I don't show you who you are mm. but I remove the blocks so how does that look like or like what does that look like in a session with you in a session with me yeah. you know somebody would maybe say you know my husband did this you know the usual or um, my you know my daughter does this or my whatever you know mm -hmm. and then what I do is, is I show them how it's them that's doing that <laughs> right Regardless so of every what, action has a reaction or kind of yeah, we're mirrors. Yeah. And we, we react to most of the things because, right. you know, if you think about it, we want somebody to be like us. True. Yeah. Why, why would you want somebody to be like you? <laughs> you know, why am Aren't I we the best for ourselves? <laughs> <laughs> ah, let them be them. Why yeah, do you want true. them to be them? Yeah. And it's the same when you're in a relationship. And I, yeah. I think that's the most you can give people, actually, for them to be their authentic selves. Absolutely. And to accept them the way they yeah. are. And if there's an issue, then come to me and then we'll work it out. Yeah. I don't give them anything. I take away. And as I say, I help them create it. The nearest thing that I'm getting to my true self is that I create myself the way that I want to create myself. Before, I was everybody else. I was a yeah. PC, everything else, and society, you name it, mm. to fit in. And I never fitted in. So now I might as well stand out. Yeah. And that is what I'm doing. And I just do exactly, I create what's right for me. If something is, if I've done something and it's off the scale, mm -hmm. I pay the price for it. And I've got it back within five minutes. And if... If if there is something that's not right, then I will come, you know, I would be like, Coco, that was off the Richter scale. And I would definitely, this is what I've done. I wouldn't apologise. Mm. I would say, this is what I've done. I've seen, here it is, and this is what I've done mm. to solve the situation. And I, that is it. Because too many people are, I'm, you know, you go into a call centre, I'm sorry. It's like. Yeah, that's true. And you I say, no, you're not. Yeah. Why, what are you sorry for? All yeah. oh, right, sorry, you're sorry for somebody else. Yeah. And they can't bear it. And it's like, well, why are you telling me you're sorry? Don't you think it's a bit of culture of sorry here in kind of the UK? Sorry and kindness. Because I was in LA recently, right? <laughs> and I would like do something and I'd go, oh, sorry. And they're like, no, we got you. It's all good. <laughs> and I'm like, why am I saying sorry? There's nothing to be sorry about. But we're so kind of trained up for this. And they were amazing. I thought, oh, that is such a funny reaction. No, forget about it. You're is all it, good. Uh, yeah, they're great. So that like, is, I do. And I'm I think sorry. it's just a reaction. Yeah. Well, I think we're very, very mechanical yeah. until you start the, the journey inward. And I think when you start the inward journey, I think it becomes very, very different. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, from being a quivering wreck, yeah, you know, and graduating towards, you know, really not being able to function at all to where I am today, 
it's just been transformational. And the only reason that I'm here and talking about these things and, you know, is because there is people out there that are hurting. Mm. And I know that, you know, I speak to them or, you know, I'm, you know, and do a lot of things. I'm in London, obviously, so we meet loads and loads of people and you can just tell they're either overweight, they're drinking too much, they're drugging too much, they're on coke. I mean, you know, how often do you see somebody that's on absolutely nothing, mm. really, that can go out into a social mm, setting. setting and have nothing in their system and it'd be an absolute hoot? I mean, I thought that was the end of my life when I was to stop drinking. <laughs> it was just the beginning of it. Yeah. But, you know, for the blackouts, and this was really profound, it was when I went out to Thailand mm -hmm. and I told this master, and I said to him, oh, I can't remember because I blacked out all the time. And I was speaking about it, and he says to me, do you know why you done that? Hmm. And I says... Well, obviously, I took the drink, you know, on top of all of the motions, which is correct. Right. But one of the things that he said, and I delved really deep into this, and I opened it up, and it and I tra and it was just unbelievable. It was it was such a light bulb moment. I trained myself to not remember because I couldn't stand the behaviour that I was doing. There's no way. And I sat down for about three years with this, him saying that one thing. And I was like, how's that? And he was like, go and work it out. That was what he says to me. <laughs> what? And I'm like, well, wait a wee minute. Yeah, I've just paid all this money. Yeah. Over here. Can you not tell <laughs> you me what? Me. Yeah. No, work it out. What? So you can actually train yourself up to have and blackouts? A hundred percent. Wow. And one of the things that happened... So when I had been found, yeah, yeah, uh, by the police, that day I went down to my sister's and I was telling her what had happened, you know, and she was like, oh, my God. She was like, have, you know, have a drink. <laughs> of course, as you do. Yeah. And I says to her, I'm never going into a blackout again. And she says to me, so that's right. And I sat and I drank a whole bottle of vodka and I never had one back out wow and I remembered everything and I was like and I never knew what had happened that day I thought it was the shock of having the police get my door mm. knocked down having to go to the police station go to the neighbour you know all the things that I had to do yeah. I thought and that was like it was like an awakening for me because when he mm. said that to me and this would be like four and a half years sober maybe five years sober I was like oh my god He's absolutely spot on. So you had a bottle of vodka when you were four years sober already? Uh, no, no, this was, that was like, before. that was before. Right, okay. Yeah, no, I've never drank drink again. Sense. I've never touched. How did you manage to keep your daughter? Did they not try and take your daughter away, given that you, no, they've, they've seen what knew. kind of state yeah. you're in? No. Okay, that's No, good. I mean, okay. she wasn't there. She was at the Friends. Right, okay. And, of course, I had to go back down to the police station. I got dressed up, as you do, you know, yeah. and then you just bullshit yourself the way through it. Yeah. So that that that's what I've done. But thank yeah. go, God, you know. And, and I mean, you know, I've got a great relationship with my daughter today. Okay. I've had, a, there was a lot of damage there. Yeah. Because there was, How I mean. How did she handle that? I mean, it was horrific that what she had to handle. Yeah. It really was. Um, but, you know, she's handled it. And I've made amends okay. time and time again. Um and I've done everything. I've owned everything that I've done. Right. I don't try and get rid of it. It's yeah. like, that's right. I didn't know what I was doing, you know. Mm -hmm. And obviously everything in my my sobriety I've, I've actually shared with her and uh, helped her out in many, many mm -hmm. situations. Um, and as I say, we've put, put it together. We've worked for 10 years um, and we help, we've helped thousands of people. So you work together with her? I work together oh, with amazing. her. Yeah, so the two of us done all the mass programs. Okay. We did all of the, we did workshops for years. We had mm -hmm. uh, all different types of business people on with us. Okay. Um, and it was just at all walks of life, you know, um, the two of us done it. And of course, she's a, a lawyer today. Um, 
and she's you know she's doing great but it, it, it wasn't an overnight job and I have to work on that every day mm. because I have to stay in my garden That's and dig my weeds and not be in anybody else's yeah. and that is not easy mm. because it's just so easy to just throw the blame onto somebody yeah. whereas as you know I, may, I might initially do that mm -hmm. just in my head sure. I'm like you know what are they doing and then it's like oh what are you doing Veronica <laughs> You know. I think I need to start training that up. <laughs> and it is, it's just that absolutely being yeah. so aware, That's you know. It, yeah, all the time. And the, the more evolved you get, the more aware you become. Sure. And obviously I do many, many practices. You know, I've been out in India. Uh, I've been all over, you know, doing all different practices, all different programs. Mm. Um, it's to do with non-verbal communication. Right. So it's all non-verbal. There's nothing verbal in it. Wow. Um, and that's helped me go very, very deep within wow. myself. So, you know, eight days in silence in the Villagre Mountains. Uh, not easy to do that, you know, when you've got to train for years to, to, to get to that point. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, I've, I've, I've done lots and lots of things. So And no talking. I would love to try that. That mm -hmm. sounds so intense and interesting. It is. Because you're just left with you in your yeah, head. that's it. And then, you you know, I used to think it was just mad people that spoke to themselves. <laughs> you know, you see these mad people on the, yeah, yeah. On, on the tube and they're like talking out loud yeah, yeah. and everybody's looking at yeah, them and I'm yeah. like, well, you're just doing exactly the same but it's in your head. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it's not any different. Oh, my gosh. All right, Veronica, thank you so much for sharing your life story. I think there's about five more books there for sure. I know, I've only just touched on it. Go, go. <laughs> I think for now, this is going to be Veronica hashtag not, the first interview. I think we're going to probably come back to this. Um, so I thank you so much for sharing all that with me and coming here. Would there be like a little takeaway that perhaps you want to share with our viewers and listeners? Yes, what I would say is it doesn't matter where you are in your life, mm -hmm. what mess you're in how pain you are, there is a solution. There is another way to look at things. And it really is beautiful. Mm. I mean, like, beautiful. Yes, it is not easy. And yes, it takes tremendous courage to sit mm. and go within. But how you feel and what you can do with your life is beyond words. I, there is no words that could ever explain that. And if anybody's hurting or anything you know then they can get in touch with us amazing and, and where would they find you they'll find me on my website okay you know or on my you want to share it with us yeah yeah so it's um www.modsley.com okay we'll put it underneath later so they can have a look yep and i've got www.theprojectionmodel.com and on there's my number okay. um and they can phone amazing Thank you so much. Thank you, Coco. Okay. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.